Brown recluse spiders, also known as Loxoscales reclusa, are found in the central Midwest United States. They are poisonous spiders with venom that is more toxic than that of a rattlesnake. Fortunately, brown recluse spiders inject much less venom than rattlesnakes do when they bite, and there is little chance of finding these spiders in areas where they are not endemic. Many people know brown recluse spiders for their bite that can cause a nasty necrotic wound that turns black. This serious manifestation rarely happens, and in reality, 90% of brown recluse bites heal without complication. Often, people do not even know they were bitten until hours later when they notice a red, swollen spot that is itchy. Those that do notice the spider biting them describe it as a pinprick or stinging. Brown recluse spiders are hunters. They bite their prey and then leave, returning later to feed. Humans, obviously, are not on their regular menu. In fact, in order to bite humans, brown recluse spiders must be pressed against the skin. True to their name, these spiders are reclusive, preferring dark, secluded locations such as basements, garages, and closets, and people are most often bitten while putting on clothing or shoes or while sleeping. The resulting bite changes quickly over time and often heals slowly. The wound is dry with little drainage. The bite may change from a purple center surrounded by a red ring to a white blister that looks like a white head. The center eventually sinks in with a lighter center, irregular dark edges, and redness around it. The redness may be surrounded by a white or blanched area due to vasoconstriction and ischemia, creating a red, white, and blue appearance. Bruising often occurs along the local lymphatic vessel. Culturing of the wound typically reveals eosinophils and neutrophils. Although rare, systemic symptoms may occur with hematological changes and abnormal values in chemistry, coagulation, and urinalysis. Sphingomyelinase D from the spider venom can attack sphingomyelin on erythrocytes, leading to hemolysis. It is not uncommon to see elevated bilirubin levels as well as elevated liver enzymes, ALT and AST. Sphingomyelinase activity can also cause platelet activation and aggregation, leading to thrombocytopenia. Elevated fibrin degradation products may be noted. Hemoglobinuria, dark urine, and elevated urobilinogen are all possible findings. Other extremely rare complications include disseminated intravascular clotting, or DIC, renal failure due to glomerular blockage by hemoglobin haptoglobin complexes, rhabdomyolysis resulting in urine myoglobin, and lung involvement due to damaged sphingomyelin. There is no single laboratory test that can diagnose brown recluse spider bites, and the laboratory's role is largely supportive. If blood products are given, fresh frozen plasma and cryoprecipitate should be avoided since they contain complement that may exacerbate bite progression. Some studies suggest prescribing DAP zone, but G6PD levels must be monitored prior to starting and during treatment. Other studies recommend prednisone or even Benadryl. Each case is unique. All patients should be monitored for the possibility of bite progression requiring further treatment and the presence of systemic symptoms necessitating supportive therapy.